Sonata Bimbo by Bucking Nonsense. So why do you think Miss Harshwini asked Sonata to stay after? Adagio Dazzle looked over at Arya Blaze with a slightly raised eyebrow. It had been two weeks since the incident at the Battle of the Bands, and the three sirens were still attending classes. By all rights, they didn't need to be here, being positively ancient by mortal standards, but without a driver's license that stated they were 18 or older, the three couldn't argue with any police officer who suspected them of truancy. Hence, they had to at least stay here until summer. But that was neither here nor there. That one little question was more concerned for either of her fellow sirens than Arya had demonstrated in over a thousand years. Adagia wondered if her counterpart might be coming down with something. After a moment, Arya gave a slight, embarrassed cough and said, It's not that I care. I'm just curious. Adagio shrugged and said, I don't really care either. I'm kind of curious myself, though. Why would Miss Harshwini ask Sonata to stay after grading yesterday's tests? You don't think she tried to cheat, do you? Arya asked, with perhaps the slightest bit of concern in her voice. <laughs> that bimbo? Adagio retorted, annoyed. Cheating requires you to be smart enough to plan ahead. She's barely smart enough to remember her own name. All right. 3x equals 7x minus 2, Miss Harshwini stated, staring down at the seated student. Solve for x. Okay, Sonata Dusk replied. x totally equals one half. The teacher nodded, then pointed to a nearby chalkboard and said, Good. Now show me how you found it. The siren nodded, stood up, and walked to the chalkboard. She then wrote out the equation that the teacher had asked, then wrote it again, this time moving the minus 2 on the right-hand side as a plus 2 on the left. She then moved the 3x over, subtracting it from the 7x. This left her with the equation 2 equals 4x. To wrap things up, Sonata then wrote 2 fourths equals 1 half, therefore x equals 1 half. Smiling innocently, the siren turned around and asked, Would you like to give me something harder? That made 10 for 10. She had answered all the questions correctly. Again. Shaking her head, the teacher said, That won't be necessary. I believe you now. I'm just surprised, I suppose. I didn't expect you to make an A-plus on yesterday's test, given your... Sonata Dusk giggled and said, Oh, I know, I know. I'm such a total bimbo. Everyone says so. But I'm like, totes more than a thousand years old. And I've been a high schooler for longer than there's been high schools. Sit through enough algebra, calculus, and trigonometry classes, and sooner or later it all starts to soak in. She giggled again and said, Besides, think about where humanity was a thousand years ago. You guys were just starting to work on getting out of the Dark Ages, and were only starting to figure your way back to the level of general education you had in the days of ancient Greece. Only, like, 5% of the population was literate in Europe, if that. Just about everyone thought the sun revolved around the Earth instead of the other way around, and people hadn't even gotten around to higher mathematics yet. Most people could barely manage 2 plus 2. When I first got here, I at least knew that much, and as thick as I can be sometimes, if given a thousand years with not much else to do, I'd hope I'd be able to learn more than that. It was sobering to consider the fact that the young lady in front of Miss Harshwinnie was more than thirty times older than her teacher. Miss Harshwinnie briefly wondered if given that much time, snips and snails would smarten up a little. Not likely. It would take time passing on a geological scale for those two dimwits to approach anything near average intelligence. And being smart enough to get straight A's, the heat death of the universe was much more likely to occur first. So, why the sudden change in your grades? Miss Harshwini asked, more than a little curious. Just before the Battle of the Bands, Sonata had failed the task so spectacularly that the teacher had been seriously tempted to handle it with surgical gloves, fearing she might somehow catch stupid from the siren. Well... Arya Blaze is, like, way too stubborn to ever change her ways or learn anything, and Adagio Dazzle considers herself too perfect to ever need to improve, and too great to ever be willing to work for anybody ever. So after graduating high school, if I don't get into a really good college and then get a really good job to put food on the table, they'll both starve. Well, either that or I'd have to find someone willing to marry the two of them, and let's face facts, nobody in their right mind would marry either of them, given everything that happened at the Battle of the Bands. That bad? the teacher asked, an eyebrow raised. She hadn't heard anything about that kind of thing, and Miss Harshwinnie definitely had sharp ears when it came to student gossip. It paid to have an idea of who might be doing what, and with whom, especially in a school like this one. Sonata nodded and said, I asked a couple of the boys here if they'd be willing to at least try dating them once. One of them ran away screaming at the top of his lungs, and another one said he'd rather, well, it involves something big, spiky, rusty, and on fire being shoved up someplace it shouldn't be, and then rotated at, like, 500 RPMs. Um, the third said he'd never go out with them even if he was paid to, but that he'd totes like to go out with me. She paused, blushing slightly, and then said, On that note, are we done? I have a date tonight, and I really need to get ready. Miss Harshwinnie smiled. A thousand years old or not, 
A teenager was still a teenager. Go right ahead. Sorry to keep you.